Hi! <laughs> so this is the in bad lighting. <laughs> Today I had this idea. So it, it requires a bit of explanation. When I was taught how to program, I was taught how to program in VHDL first and I was taught how to program in VHDL by a defense contractor company. So I was taught not only VHDL but VHDL with extremely strict design specifications. I uh, didn't know about asynchronous processes or asynchronous always blocks as they are in Verilog for the first at least year of my training. Like literally they just didn't tell me they existed. They literally were just like, here's a process, you put the clock there, that's how it works. I had no idea that these things even existed until like two, three years into my career. So all of the coding that I did for the first couple of years did not include a single asynchronous always block. And even now, the majority of the times I use an asynchronous always block is in a state machine. My next video, I will tell you about how I do that because my next video is going to be a state machine video. So as a test, I was like, okay, but now I've got to check how many asynchronous always blocks do I have in my code base? So I have the code that I started writing way back in 2014. So I have seven years of Verilog, my entire career's worth of Verilog on my PC. So I gripped, I was like, this is gonna be fun, let's see, right? So I've got numbers, right? So let's go through these. I graped through my entire code base. It's millions of lines of Verilog at this point. And 32,600 lines had always on them, right? So that means I've written 32,600 always blocks. Like what? That's crazy. That's just insane. Of those 32,600 always blocks, 195 were asynchronous. That's 0.5%. 0.5% of my always blocks that I wrote in the seven year span were asynchronous. 99.5% of my always blocks are synchronous always blocks. How crazy is that? So as a beginner, should you be using synchronous always blocks? Probably, yeah. I do them. That's all I do. So what are my 200, 195 non-synchronous always blocks? Well, the vast, vast majority of them, there's a handful that are actually combinatorial that are not state machines. The vast majority, like 180 out of 195 are state machines. So the my state machine method has changed over the years and towards the last few years of my career, I've switched over to doing a two process state machine and one of the processes is asynchronous and it's become a really really nice method i love my state machine method i will share my state machine method with you next in, on wednesday is when that video is coming out and that 200 is almost exclusively those state machines and otherwise thirty-two thousand always blocks that are synchronous can you believe it so uh, i just thought that that would give you an idea of understanding like so much focus like you get taught about asynchronous always blocks all the time as a beginner they come up do you actually need them maybe for a state machine but for pretty much anything else use synchronous the only caveat that i will say is that of my seven year span i've been doing primarily 100 meg and over designs so the reason why i've been using so many synchronous always blocks is because uh, i've been doing faster clock designs 100 meg and above is kind of into the faster domain so it's like i think the highest i went up to is 250. so anyway i thought that was a funny idea bye <laughs>